Welcome! In this video, we're getting, taking a quick look at Crucio, the legendary grade debuffer class Edelune that was recently added. Looking over at his base stats, they're pretty decent as a 6 star, and they do go up quite nicely once you get him transcended up to the max. He ends up with a pretty decent 56k base HP, which is good, makes him tanky, and that can help him. His attack speed at 109 is pretty decent, it's a little bit on the higher side, but still kind of mid. But this does help him as he does have skills and stuff that will benefit his attack speed too, so making him very quick. Let's take a look at some of his skills. His first skill, the Brutal Torture. This skill is a multi-hitting physical attack skill. Uh, unlike other basic skills though, this one does have a chance to uh, stun the target uh, if you crit. So with a crit, you have a 25% chance to stun the target for one turn. As the skill is uh, leveled up, up to the max, the stun chance and the stun duration remain the same, still 25% a chance to do it on a crit and for still one turn. This isn't too bad, the damage is pretty decent, it is a multi-hitting physical skill, so it's not too bad. Frontline first, so no backline attacking on this one. Um, the skill gem effect of this one, restoring one soul with 5% chance, isn't bad as this is a physical damaging skill. The red, red, orange gems on it is not a bad thing. Since it is a primary skill, having the chance to restore one soul with it isn't a bad option as the skill really doesn't have many other uses. Going with the skill gem set on this is, is a pretty good idea. Uh, looking into a special skill, special skill only takes two souls. This skill is interesting, and once I acquire him, or if I acquire him, I'd like to test out more about this uh, to see exactly how it works and what it does. But according to the skill, it says that he that he deals soul damage to himself for 75% of his max HP. So essentially, you're killing yourself just to gain a buff, and this buff just increases his crit rate and attack speed. And you can't use it whenever his HP is low. Now. As the skill is leveled up, the soul damage and stuff remains the same at 75% of his max HP. So this could be bad. It's, you can't use it at low HP, but what happens if you're at, say, 70% HP? Do you kill yourself to use it? I mean, where is the low HP cutoff for that? So that's something I'd like to test later. Um, however, when it is leveled up, though, the crit rate increase does go up to 40%, which does help his skill 1 have a higher chance to stun, plus his attack speed going up by 70%. Now, this is a 4 turn duration, so it means that he can have a high crit rate and attack speed for quite often. Now, this could be useful uh, if you run him with uh, like an Illusia, because uh, once he does do damage to himself to go low, then you can use her to immediately kind of heal him back up, because she would cut uh, in between once he gets low, and then she would be able to heal him. The skill gem effect of this one, 5% chance of extending the duration of this one by one turn. It's a very low chance at 5% to extend the duration. Now the yellow, yellow violent gems means it's, you know, the effect the buff effect is better, and then the violent is speed. So, this would just give the violent gives you a little bit more speed after using this skill, which you're already getting 70% from. But uh, going with another yellow gem here would boost not only the speed, but you would also gain the extra crit rate ability too. So, going just a full yellow set might be a pretty good option here, as the increased duration for this skill isn't that amazing but it's not a skill you would probably going to be wanting to spam considering it does do damage to yourself to use it. However, in the testing mode here, the damage doesn't take effect, so I'm pretty sure that's just a testing mode option and not something that you would see in battle. Uh, his ultimate skill, the Iron Maiden, this is a six soul skill. Um, it is a physical, this is an AoE skill, it's a physical damage skill. This one does a spell effect for restrain for one turn. If it crits, it also puts a bleeding effect for three turns, which is pretty decent, so it's a good debuffing skill. Um, as it's leveled up, it, the damage goes up to be pretty decent. The spell effect that is restrain goes up to two turns as an AoE, which is pretty nice. And then the uh, bleeding effect goes up to four turns if you crit. So using this after you use like his special skill, that just makes him better because he has that increased crit rate, meaning that he has a higher chance of landing these bleeds and a higher on this skill and a higher chance of landing the stuns with the normal skill. So 
the special skill, the, the crit rate effect there plus the speed boost lets him turn cycle pretty crazy. The skill gem effect of this one is a 10% chance of removing one solar rage from the enemy, so as an AoE, it's a 10% chance, so you have a decent chance of removing it from one, and if you remove it from one, then it's the entire team. As an AoE, it's not a bad thing here. It's a red, red, violent, so this skill does do decent damage, so the red, red for physical damage, violent is for speed. It's not a bad thing, and it could be kind of helpful uh, for your team if you can land that soul removal on them then it could uh, potentially stop them from being able to use a skill or something against you because they might not have enough souls to do it especially if you can land that chance on more than one but even if you land it on one you can still disrupt the team uh, looking in at his passives now, uh, this one, uh, whenever it inflicts a status effect on the enemy, targets the lowest resistance rate of the four status effect resistance rates. So, uh, for example, this skill, from what I can tell just from the testing so far, uh, on this skill, when he attacks something, he does different types of effects, like his special skill, or his ultimate skill and stuff does a physical effect and a spell effect. Well. If they have high resistance rate to spell, but they have really low resistance um, to, you know, physical effects or something, then the skill will will go by the resistance rate of the lowest one of the four different resistances. So it'll target that one and use the resistance rate of that one instead of the resistance rate of the type of effect he's applying. So that gives them a really good chance of landing all the re all the effects because it'll always target the lowest resistance rate. So that makes it pretty good for him for being able to land those things as it doesn't matter what the resistance are. If they have high resistance to a specific thing, he's still going to go for the one that they have the lowest against. Uh, the second passive here, this one increases the chances of inflicting a status effect for 3% for every attack. Uh, increases up to 30%, it's doubled when he lands as a crit. So basically this means uh, any time that he lands, uh, every time he does an attack, he has a higher chance of landing it. So it's like increasing accuracy almost. He gives himself a better chance of landing that that effect and if he crits then it goes up by 6% instead of 3%. Now this goes up to 30% max and once you can hit that it's a cap. And so critting just gets you up to that 30% max uh, faster and it's uh, like a soul effect buff on him. You'll notice the same icon as the passive. It'll be on him like above him as a buff and it's a soul effect so that way it's, it's there. So as he starts attacking he and getting turns, he has a higher and higher chance of inflicting them, which is kind of like offsetting the tolerance stacks that the other side is getting. His uh, third passive now, this one also is another one that increases his chance of landing the status effects on an enemy based on the lost HP of the enemy. So the more, I, I guess it's, you know, it's kind of a another way for him to have a better chance of landing status effects onto enemies. So essentially all of his passives increase his ability to land his debuffs, making him good as a debuffer since that's what he's doing. It gives him a high chance of landing all those debuffs. So with that in mind, you know, using something like his uh, ultimate skill for landing those two turn restraints across the entire team is going to be pretty good because that's a good AOE CC type thing that he can do there. He has a good chance of landing it because all of his passives kind of work with him to be able to do that. He has a good chance of landing those brandings if he uses a special skill to gain that crit rate. So if you can bring something else like a Karu to, in, to increase his crit rate to get him up to that 100%, then you can use the ultimate skill to restrain and bleed the entire team for you know multiple turns. Uh, and then his normal skill, which would also be stunning for one turn, uh, with a 25% chance every time he crits, so it, he is potentially good as a CC uh, type, you know, Elune for your team, uh, especially for AOE, so it's not bad there. He does ha seem to have some potential for PvP and for PvE just because of that. Now, his stats and base stats are pretty decent, so he is going to be, you know, somewhat annoying to deal with, I think, in a PvP aspect. 
It didn't. It is an interesting kit. I just based on what it is, though, it doesn't seem too overwhelming to me or too amazing of a kit. But it'll be interesting to play around with them and uh, try out some combos and other team things that you can go with on him to see, you know, kind of what happens with him and see how he works. I think there there's some potential for good teams that you can use with him. Um, he does seem like he's still going to be having a hard time to landing debuffs or dealing with the uh, Trent defenses. So Trent is always going to be a problem for debuffers because Trent is always going to be able to cleanse, but he can also throw up immunity, and he also gives a increased uh, resistance rate as long as he's alive. So it can make you know debuffer jobs even harder. That's why the uh, the buff that they did to Alvita is very good for Trent's because if there's no immunity there, she's going to land the debuffs if they're high HP because she just ignores the resistance altogether. Whereas Crucio here, he doesn't ignore it; he just has a better chance of landing it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, what the uses of this, what people come up with. Um, I'll be interested to play around with him if I get him later. Uh, to see how he works, to see what he does, and to see if I can, you know, come up with any type of good methods for using him. I don't know if he would be very good on for air battle defenses, just because of what he is. I think he would be better offensively, because you wouldn't want to stick him on an air battle defense, and he just spams his special skill all the time and just kills himself because he has no HP. So I don't know if he'd work very well on a defense thing where you can't control him. I think you'd really want to be able to control that special skill and when you use it to make sure that you use it and then can heal him right after if he is doing that damage to himself like the skill states. Um, he seems pretty interesting. Seems... Uh, it seems like he does have some usage, uh, especially as a debuffer in SEC. So we'll have to play around with him and see what it is. Uh, as far as gear sets go on him, um, just because of his uh, skill one being able to have a chance to stun on crits, uh, like a violent, a violent uh, rune set or the uh, great spirit set, a full great spirit set would be good. Um, full moon set would be good because that just even further increases his ability to do debuffs so that would be a good set a uh, full debuffer set would be good for him too same thing as a full moon set just increases his ability to land those debuffs which would be good for him that way he can do that plus do damage as his base stats were pretty decent um, ending at a 9.5k attack once maxed out that does put him at a pretty high attack rate so um, since he does buff himself with crit too, he would be critting very often. So he seems like he could be a pretty uh, good damage dealer for many cases too, as well as being a debuffer. So that's something to keep in mind when you're building him, that going with an attack build on him wouldn't be a bad idea, as he does seem like he's going to be able to have good survivability with his high HP and decent defenses, physical and magic defenses. But that attack being pretty high, and uh, he's going to have really high crit rate with his own buff you should be doing some pretty good damage with him so it'll be interesting to see how he is see what people come up with but he does look like he's pretty good and does have some unique abilities and things uh, he should be landing debuffs all the time so whatever accuracy and stuff you can give him to make sure he lands those would do it so anything like that that can help him land debuffs is going to be good so that's going to be it for this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.